Hi Year 2 and welcome to Tuesday's Maths lesson. We're still working on volume and again we're going to be comparing volume today. So today you'll need your work from yesterday so we can do some marking, some blank paper, a pencil, your partner and if you want to do one of the challenges you will need some water and some cups or glasses or things. So yesterday we were comparing different volumes and sometimes some capacities. So I have written example answers. You might have written yours with different words or you might have written them slightly differently. But for question one, you could have said glass A contains more juice than glass B. Or you could have said glass B contains less juice than glass A. For question two, you could have said glass A contains less juice than glass B, or you could have said the opposite, glass B contains more juice than glass A. For question three, you could have said something along the lines of glass A contains the same volume of juice as glass B, or glass A and glass B have equal amounts of, glass, of juice, anything to show that they both have the same amount. For questions four, five, and six, we were comparing capacities. So for question four, you could have said something along the lines of bottle A has a greater capacity than bottle B. It can hold more liquid. Now, again, we couldn't say this exactly definitely because we didn't measure them. But just by looking at the size and how tall the bottles are and how wide, we can estimate and we can say that bottle A looks like it has a greater capacity, so it can hold more liquid. For question five, we could say bottle A and bottle B have equal capacities. They can hold the same amount of liquid. And for question six, bottle A has a smaller capacity than bottle B. It cannot hold as much liquid. So today we're comparing volume again. Now I have some jugs here that I filled up with coloured water just like yesterday. I filled them up to the top so in fact what we can compare here is the capacity of these containers. Um, I want you to just pause and have a talk to your partner about how we could compare these capacities, these volumes. Think about what we learned yesterday and if that would help you. Now, we could measure these capacities using the lunch boxes we used yesterday, but I'm a bit worried because I think some of these would be too big for one of these lunch boxes. I don't think all of that liquid would fit into the lunchbox. So that I don't think the capacity of the lunchbox is big enough. I don't think it is big enough to hold all of that liquid. So instead, I've got some small cups, all of the same size, and we'll pour the liquid into the cups and see how many cups we need for each liquid. So I'm going to start off with the blue liquid, so I'll move the yellow and green away. I don't want any accidents, if I can avoid them. Okay, so let's start off with our first cup. And we'll pour in some a little bit of a spill already. Pour in some liquid to the top. So that's one cup. Wipe up my spill. And the next cup. And still more liquid left, so we can try another cup. Okay. 
Oops, still some more liquid. Let's see. Okay, so all of the blue liquid has been poured out and it has filled up one, two, three, and a bit. I'd say that's just over halfway full. So just over three and a half cups of blue liquid. This time we're going to measure the green liquid. So I've got my cups again and we'll carefully pour one cup. Here and another cup. Still plenty of liquid left. Another cup. Still quite a lot of liquid left. Let's do another cup. And even still some liquid left. Do another cup in front. Okie doke. So I'll move the camera back a little bit so you can see better. Liquid, we got one, two, three, four, nearly five cups. And finally, we'll measure the yellow liquid. So we'll start off with our first cup. There's one. stubborn cups. There's two. Just about, nearly two. So with our yellow cups we have one full, one nearly full, so just under two cups of yellow liquid. So these pictures here will help you to compare. We can see the blue liquid all poured into the blue cups. We can see the green liquid all poured into the green cups and the yellow liquid all poured into the yellow cups. So I can make quite a few statements here to compare these volumes. I can say the green jug has the greatest capacity because it can hold nearly five cups of water. I could add even more information to that sentence, in fact, to make it a bit more detailed, to say the green jug has the greatest capacity because it can hold nearly five cups of water. The others can't hold that much, or the others can only hold four cups or two cups. I could say the yellow bottle has the smallest capacity because it can only hold nearly two cups of water. I can say the blue jug has a greater capacity than the yellow bottle. So the blue jug has a greater capacity than the yellow bottle because it can hold nearly four cups of water, which is more than nearly two. Or I could say the blue jug has a smaller capacity blue jug has a smaller capacity than the green jug because it can hold nearly four cups of water which is less than nearly five and this method of comparing capacities pouring the liquid or the contents into identical smaller containers like cups that helps us 
in the example we just did where we're comparing big containers, but it also helps us in a situation like this. So I've got three teapots here. They're all the same size. So they all have the same capacity. They can all hold the same amount of tea, but we can't see through them. They are not made of transparent material, so I don't know how much tea is inside each teapot. I have been drinking a lot of tea these last few weeks, so I know I've drank quite, quite a bit from each of them, but I don't know how much is left. So, how can we compare them? Well, we can use the exact same method by pouring the tea into different cups that are the same size and then we'll be able to see how much vol what volume, how much tea is in each teapot and we can compare. Have a look at this. So, I've got pictures here to show. I've got green teacups full of the tea from the green teapot, yellow teacups full of the tea from the yellow teapot and orange teacups full of the tea from the orange teapot. So I've got some questions underneath and these are the kind of questions that I can answer now that I've done my method of pouring all of the liquid into the same identical sized cups. If you're feeling really confident with volume so far, you and your partner can have a go at these questions here, a bit like guided practice or I'm going to explain how to answer them on the next slide. So, for the first question, which teapot contained the most tea? The answer is the orange teapot. The reason the orange teapot is the answer is because the orange teapot gave us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cups of tea. The green teapot only gave us one, two, three, four, five, six, and the yellow teapot only gave us one, two, three. Seven cups is more than six cups, and it's more than three cups, so the teapot that contained the greatest volume of tea, or the most tea, was the orange teapot. Which teapot contained the smallest volume of tea? The answer is the yellow teapot. That's because it only gave three cups of tea. The green teapot gave six. Three is less than six. The orange teapot gave seven. Three is also less than seven. For this third question, which teapot held more tea than the green teapot? Well, let's see. The green teapot, let's remind ourselves, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cups of tea. So if we want to find out which teapot held more than that, we're looking for a teapot that gave us more than six cups. Uh, hmm, can't be the yellow teapot because one, two, three is less than six. Could it be the orange teapot? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, the answer is the orange teapot because seven cups is more than six cups. And finally, which teapot held less than the green teapot? So really, this is the opposite of the question we've just done. Which teapot held less than the green teapot? So that's asking us which teapot gave less than six cups. The only one that gave less than six was the orange, or the <laughs> yellow teapot. So the answer is the yellow teapot, because three cups is less than six cups. Okay, time for guided practice now. It's quite a short one for you and your partner to do. There are two kettles. They were full up, and then all of that water was poured into some cups so that you can compare the volumes of water in each kettle. There are just three questions to answer. Don't forget for question C, using the greater than and less than symbols, think about those greedy crocodiles or greedy fish. They always have their mouth open wide to gobble up the biggest value. Good luck. 
Okay, we'll do some quick answers for your guided practice. For question A, kettle B has less water than kettle A. We can see that kettle B has one, two, three, four, five. Kettle A has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five is less than eight, so kettle B has less water than kettle A. This next question again is sort of the opposite of question A. Which kettle has a greater amount of water? It's kettle A, because eight cups is more than five cups. And finally, use less than, greater than, or equals. So in the middle, we use the greater than symbol. That greedy fish crocodile wants to gobble up kettle A because there is more water, there's greater value. There are eight cups in there. And independent work. So again, just like yesterday, we're not using our workbooks because most of you probably still don't have them, but there are two sheets for you to do. And again, just like yesterday, you don't need to draw any pictures. You can draw the pictures if that would help you but you can just write your answers like this in sentences. So you have a few capacities to compare or some volumes to compare. In question four, this example, this question, do you remember I said yesterday that we can use capacity to measure things like how many people can fit in a classroom or how many pencils can fit in a pencil case? And I said that we would mainly be focusing on liquid for ours, but I've thrown in a question, question four, that's comparing something that isn't liquid. So it's how many trowels of soil will fill a pot. If you would like to do some challenges, those are on the next slide. So you could either do a bit of exploring, like I know a few of you did yesterday, if you can find some cups or bowls or glasses in your house that are all the same size, then you could use those to compare some volumes of water. For example, how much water can you fit in the kettle? You could measure it with cups. See if you can figure out things like, if you've got a few containers, which one has the greatest capacity or which has the least? And can you think of any good tips for measuring? For somebody who is doing this for the very first time, what would you recommend they do or don't do? There's also another challenge um, in the same file where you got your independent work. And it's saying that this bottle is equal to two glasses of water. So all of the water that you could fill up this bottle with would fit into two glasses. Then it's asking how many glasses will two bottles fill? Or how many bottles would you need to make six glasses of water? Bit of a tricky challenge there. I think you're all going to do fantastically with this. I loved some of the pictures I saw from yesterday. Best of luck with your work, you two.